On today's show, revenge is a dish best served by making your free throws and delivering crunch time execution, which the Houston Rockets did not do in their loss to the Dallas Mavericks. We're going to break it all down for you on today's Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control, Houston. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, it wasn't officially official last game after the loss to the Warriors, but now it is. The Houston Rockets have been unceremoniously eliminated from the NBA play-in tournament race after their 147-136 loss in overtime to the Dallas Mavericks, a game that should have never been in overtime. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin. The show, of course, at Locked on Rockets, free and available wherever you listen to your podcast, including YouTube, where the best way you can help our show is to comment anything below. Let me know your thoughts on this Rockets collapse against the Dallas Mavericks, unable to get revenge after the Mavericks and Luka Doncic embarrassed them just one week ago on their home turf in Toyota Center. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. This game should have never been in overtime. And there's a bunch of reasons for why this game got out of hand. A game in which the Rockets came out strong in the first quarter. A really dominant opening frame for the Rockets led by 42-27 after one. A 15-point lead in this game. They led, <clears throat> they led by as many as 22 early before the Mavericks started getting a ton of... We're going to get we're gonna get into the game flow. We're going to focus here on the end of this game. The, the, the utter collapse... At the end of regulation, leading to the Rockets' fifth straight loss, lost to the Mavericks twice now in the span of a week, which always stings, losing to the I-45 rivals. But this game was a roller coaster down the stretch. I mean, the the Mavs, Rockets led the entire way. Mavs didn't come back in to tie it until it was 96 all in the third quarter. And at one point, you know, from from that point, taking the Rockets were able to respond, kind of push back out back in front. Mavericks clawed their way back into this game, but down the stretch of this one, it was kind of a roller coaster to close things out. There were some big shots, some big threes by Dylan Brooks. Reggie Bullock hit a big shot. Jabari Smith Jr. hit a big shot late in this game. Uh, Kyrie Irving was absolutely on one in the fourth quarter. He had 19 fourth quarter points in this game. Kyrie Irving could, I mean, he he couldn't, he really couldn't miss in the fourth quarter. And yet the Rockets still had answers and they were looking good. They were actually in a position to win this game with under a minute to go. Reggie Bullock hit a huge three pointer to give the Rockets a 128 126 lead next possession down Rockets force Maxi Kleber into a bad three point shot. Great defensive possession. And then on the subsequent offensive possession, Mavs have to foul. So Dante Exum fouls Fred Van Vliet. There's some incidental contact. Dante Exum gets smacked in the face, but it's after the intentional foul to put Fred Van Vliet at the free throw line. Mavs tried to challenge it. They actually lost one of their timeouts, which was really beneficial for the Rockets, or or I guess maybe it wasn't, because maybe if they had stopped to draw up a play on the final possession, we could be talking about a Rockets win instead of a loss. But Fred goes to the free throw line, only goes one of two. At the charity stripe. Fred Van Vliet is a good free throw shooter. He has no business going one of two at the free throw line in that situation. So the Rockets are still up three. It's a one possession game, but they're up three. Now the Mavericks call timeout, their final timeout of the game, and they get a great play drawn up. Kyrie Irving comes off a Luka Doncic screen, gets a wide open, wide open three pointer. First off, it was a moving screen by Luka. I'm just going to point that out. Second, wide open three. Misses it as hot as he was in the fourth quarter. Misses the three to tie the game up. Rockets get the rebound. Reggie Bullock gets the rebound. Almost turns it over because he's like playing hot potato with the ball. Tries to get rid of it. Almost sends it out of bounds. 
gets it to Fred Van Vliet. Rockets call timeout. They come back down. They actually have to call a second timeout because Ime Odoka is trying to make sure he understand, you know, all the guys understand where they have to be, how to advance the ball, all this stuff. Rockets eventually come down. They have to inbound the ball. They get it into Fred, who then has to try and pitch it back to Jabari. Jabari gets it. He's almost out of place on the court, and it was almost a turnover. It was an insane roller coaster at the end of this game. So many almost turnovers by the Rockets. Jabari goes to the free throw line, and eerily reminiscent of the game earlier this season, the second game of the year against the San Antonio Spurs on the road, in which Jabari Smith Jr. choked at the free throw line and missed two free throws that could have put the game away. It happened again. The Rockets were up three. Jabari only needed one free throw to put this game out of reach for the Mavericks. And he missed both free throws. And then the Mavericks brought the ball up in transition. And Luka drew the attention of the Rockets, kicked it to Dante Exum. And he drained a very, very clutch three-pointer at the buzzer to send this game to overtime. And Ime was pissed post-game when asked why the Rockets didn't foul up three, which is the strategy that he's used in the past. I'm not going to yell in front of the team if he misses both foul. So, I mean, we know what we do, and I related to a few individuals, and we got to take that foul. Do it all year. For my eternity as a coach, I'm going to foul up three. Are there benefits in terms of so much has been about growth? This is a hard way to learn, but can a team learn from these things? Yeah, I mean, that point right there, obviously. Uh, we did it a few games ago as well and won in overtime when we should have taken a foul. Um, the, the OKC game. Um, so you like to see that, especially from some veterans, no doubt. You, you know, we got to know that and understand that. Um, and this late in the season, yes, it's you can go through them, but it's, like I said, after 70, 80 plus games almost, you got to know what we're doing there. Ime Udoka clearly, visibly frustrated and upset with his team's inability to understand the assignment there at the end of the game. And understandably so. He has always been a coach that wants to foul when you're up three. And for the Rockets, for the five guys on the court in that moment at the end of regulation to not know that that was the move. The Mavs had no timeouts. The Rockets could have easily gotten into a free throw battle with them and just whittled down the clock. It would not have that have been that big of a deal. That is such poor attention to detail that is inexcusable late game execution. I would argue that the Rockets inability to foul up three and what led to the final possession with Dante Exum draining a three pointer is actually a bigger misstep than Fred missing his free throw earlier with 30 seconds left in the game. Uh, and even bigger than Jabari going over to at the line. I get that those free throws would have been able to maybe put the game out of arm's reach from the Mavericks, but you need to know what you're doing in those final moments. You need to know what you're executing and what your coach wants of you. And the way Ime said it, right? He's not going to sit there on the sideline and yell at these guys, foul, foul, foul. Like, that's not it. You need to understand what the assignment is in that moment. And we've seen this Rockets team now twice within you know the span of a couple weeks mess up at the end of a game and not foul when they're up three, leading to an overtime opportunity for the opposing team. So a really upsetting end of this game, a game in which the Rockets should have, could have, would have won if they had executed properly in a couple different ways, the free throw shooting and the final possession of the game. But this game was an absolute roller coaster and there was a lot of back and forth. We're going to get into some of the actual game flow here in just a moment. Way too much foul trouble for the Houston Rockets in this one. They lost a Min Thompson early in this game, ejected with a flagrant two. What happened with Jalen Green in this game as well? A very hot start and then an absolutely ice cold finish. We're going to get to all of that and so much more here in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more players' stats and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is so simple to play. You can make your picks and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app on the market. And right now, you can get in on the playoff action and win up to one. 
100 times your money with prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during NBA postseason. So if you've been thinking about trying daily fantasy sports, give prize picks a chance. Download the app today and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go grab that app and download it. And then use promo code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And continuing on here at Locked On Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Really quick here at the top of segment two, some exciting news for us all here at Locked On as we have introduced the Locked On Houston Sports Postcast show with fantastic host Michael Connor. He's a guy that I've worked a lot with in the past. We both worked at Sports Talk 790. Uh, I used to be a producer for one of his shows over there. Great guy, knows Houston sports through and through. And he is going to be doing a new postcast show for us here at Locked On, which means after every Rockets, Astros, Texans, and Cougars football game, he is going to be going live on YouTube for an instant reaction to what happened in these games. Because sometimes, you know, podcasting, the nature of the beast is, you know, we got to sit down and edit and record. And, you know, sometimes we're doing, you know, post game interviews with players and coaches and all that kind of stuff. And so it's hard to get a quick turnaround. So Michael's job is going to be to go live immediately after these games and interact with you guys, see what y'all are feeling and saying on YouTube. And then those videos, those postcast shows are going to show up in the podcast feed as well after he's done with the live show on YouTube. So do us all a favor. Go find Locked On Sports Postcast, Locked On Sports Houston, I apologize, on the YouTube page. Go subscribe. Go check it out. Uh, love what Michael's doing. Go support him. And you'll be able to see the the, uh, the audio in your podcast feed as well. In addition to, you know, we'll always have our thoughts here as well, our game breakdowns, our post-game analysis and everything. So be sure to check that out. Show him some love. But let's go ahead and get into a little bit more of the details from this game because this was actually a really encouraging start to this game for the Rockets. Again, they finished that first quarter up 42-27, and they were dominant. I mean, at one point, it was like 24-5. Like, they had the Mavericks completely befuddled. They had no idea what was going on, and it looked like they were headed for just pitching a complete shutout against Dallas. The defensive intensity and effort out of the gate. This Rockets team was playing like a team that had just gotten punked a week earlier by the Dallas Mavericks. And that's exactly how you want this team to come out, right? They're a young team. You want them to play with a chip on their shoulder and you want them to come back and have some respect for themselves to not just roll over and be like, oh, our season's over. We lost to the Warriors. The play-in's probably out of reach. And they came out and they were playing with heart. They were playing with intensity. They were hustling. The defense looked great. All of it, right? Amin Thompson was a really big part of the defense early on. And then the Rockets lost Amin Thompson because, and this is the part that I still don't understand. I still haven't had a chance to go back and like revisit the play in particular, but there was a play with about four minutes left to go in the first quarter. So only, you know, seven, eight minutes had gone by in the game. And it looked like Amin Thompson and Maxi Kleber had gotten tangled up down low on a possession. And then Amin like stopped, tried to, you know, get him off. They were kind of tangled up. Amin kind of spun, and then he he threw an elbow directly into Maxi's like, throat. And it I don't think Amin was, like, intentionally trying to, like, you know, hit him in the head or in the throat with his elbow. I think he was just trying to, like, spin and get him off because they were tangled up for a second. And I don't know if anything came before them being tangled. Maybe there were some words exchanged going up and down the court. But I, I, there's not a singular possession that stands out before all that went down. And unfortunately for the Rockets, they lost their kind of ace defender in Amin Thompson. Very reminiscent of the previous game between these two teams where Amin Thompson was in foul trouble. And when Amin Thompson got into foul trouble, it really limited what the Rockets were able to do defensively without him out there on the basketball floor, right? You lose your ace defender. You lose a guy who's switchable, who allows you to do so many of the things you want to do when, you, when you're switching your defense one through five and having a guy like that out there to have individual reps where you're guarding Luka or guarding Kyrie in isolation or even just being a help side defender, right? Crisp rotations. All the things that Amin Thompson does and brings to the court defensively you lose all that because he threw the elbow, they went and reviewed it, and they assessed him a flagrant two, so he was ejected. Huge loss for the Rockets in a game in which they then proceeded to, after losing one of their five starters in Amin Thompson, they proceeded to have 
an immense amount of foul trouble in this game. First off, the amount of free throws in this one were absurd. The Mavs shot 45 free throws. They were 40 of 45, 88.9%. Rockets shot 35 free throws. They were 27 of 35 for 77.1%. Again, Rockets hit a few more free throws. We could be talking about a win instead of a loss right now. Already harped on that in the first segment. But just the overall, like the amount, the choppiness of this game. The overall abundance and insane amount of free throws in this one. And I, look, I've said this so many times. I hate harping on refereeing. I really do. I genuinely hate it. I try not to sit here and blame the officials for a loss, for a win, whatever. It really felt kind of one-sided on some of the calls in this game. Luka had nine free throw attempts. Kyrie had 17 free throw attempts in this game. I don't think Kyrie earned all 17 of those free throws. I'm going to be completely honest, especially, and this is where like there's like this massive like double standard uh, where Kyrie Irving had that one where he shot the three and Jalen Green, this was Jalen Green's fourth foul too, so it was a big, it was a, a really important foul call. Ime tried to challenge it because Kyrie very clearly kicked his leg out on the three-point attempt. And Jalen Green wasn't in his landing space, but they did not overrule the call on the floor. They said that there was a uh, uh, body contact after the shot or something. I forget what, it, what the exact official NBA official terminology was on that shot, but it just feels kind of lopsided, especially then when you look at some of the fouls that Jalen green didn't get when he was driving to the basket in this game. Namely, there was one possession very late in regulation at the end of the game. Uh, I apologize, late in regulation or late in overtime. Uh, one of one or the other where he drove in and was incredibly physical on his drive and, and received no whistle. And that happens, uh, you know, a fair few times a game for Jalen where he drives and initiates contact. And that's the way that it's supposed to be officiated in today's NBA is if you initiate contact, if the defender is not in legal guarding position, you should be getting free throws. And this was a game where it was incredibly physical. They were letting a lot of stuff go in the first quarter. And then suddenly like the officials, it's like they woke up. It's like they got to the game late and they were like, Oh, maybe we should start blowing some whistles. Cause we didn't call anything in the first quarter, which really oddly been or not oddly. It disproportionately benefited the Rockets and them being a bit more undersized, not really having uh, the size to match up with, you know, a Daniel Gafford type inside for the Mavericks. And they're a small team. They like to switch everything. So it actually helped the Rockets in that first quarter. And then it was really hard for this team. I feel like to adjust in the remain the remainder of the game after the referee started calling things a lot tighter. So just want to point, I mean, up and down the lineup, you look at the foul trouble for the Rockets. Jabari finished with five fouls. Dylan Brooks had five fouls. Fred had four fouls. Jalen finished with five fouls. Uh, Reggie Bullock fouled out of the game. Like it was, it was absurd up and down the lineup, the level at which certain guys had to play with four and five fouls for extended periods of time that then compromise the Rockets' overall defense, right? Because when you're trying to guard guys like Luka Doncic, guys like Kyrie Irving, who it actually felt like the Rockets, until Kyrie really exploded in the fourth quarter and really started to take over, it really felt like the Rockets actually did a much better job defensively in this game. Their overall defensive approach, their help when they were guarding Luka, they weren't like actively blitzing and doubling him at times but they were trapping him occasionally. The help at the nail was in a better spot. They were shading off certain guys to really kind of force Luca into being more of a playmaker at times. And overall, I thought they did a much better job guarding Luca this time around than they did in their previous meetup last Sunday in Houston. But it was just too little too late by the time Kyrie started cooking in the fourth quarter on his way to that 19-point quarter. I mean, he was just... He was unstoppable. He basically went on a tear and carried the Mavericks by himself for a little stretch there in the fourth. And that's what the issue becomes is when you're fouling too much like that and you've already lost your ace perimeter defender in Amin Thompson, you put yourself in a position to be subjected to what Kyrie and Luka want to do. Because then at that point, you can't foul. You can't be physical defensively. It was just an ugly, ugly showing. And it, I, I'm sure that this game was incredibly frustrating to try and find any semblance of rhythm to try and get into things for the Rockets. But that foul trouble was, was a big part of this loss. So even despite like, you know, the, the, the fouls, all that stuff, they still had a chance to win this game at the end, right? They, they were able to overcome a lot in this game defensively. 
They did a really good job forcing the Mavericks into some difficult shots. They did a really good job forcing turnovers, generating opportunities off that, um, even getting out in transition. The Rockets... <clears throat> The Mavericks had 17 turnovers. The Rockets had 19 points scored off of those turnovers. And they also got out in transition a lot in this game. 28 fast break points in this one. So overall, an impressive performance. The Rockets were good enough to win this game. They just didn't close things out. And a big part of that was Jalen Green, who had an incredible first quarter. He was 6 of 7 shooting. He was on fire in that first frame. And then he just kind of struggled the rest of the way. We're going to talk about his performance as well as final thoughts from this one coming up in just one moment. First, today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive because LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. And final segment here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. All right, let's talk a little Jalen Green here because the Jalen Green experience in this game uh, was a little confusing, to say the least. Uh, he was on fire out of the gate. I mean, it looked like we were getting like unguardable tour Jalen Green for a second. I mean, he opened that first quarter. He was a big reason why the Rockets jumped out to such an impressive lead early on. He had 15 points. In the first quarter, six of seven shooting. He was two of three from downtown, hit his only free throw attempt, had a couple assists, had a couple steals. He was electric in the first quarter. And then he just kind of disappeared the rest of the way. Now, that's not to say that he didn't. He was still facilitating the rest of the game. He had six assists the rest of the way. He was still reading the defense really well and making good high level reads, which is uh, again, the element of his game, which, you know, is how he's able to impact the game when he's not scoring the ball. But when your best player struggles that much to score the ball, the rest of the game, again, he only scored six points after the first quarter across the third, the fourth or the third, sorry, the second, the third, the fourth quarter and overtime Jalen green only had six points. He had no shots in the second quarter. In the third quarter, uh, he went 0 of 3, uh, which was all threes. Um, and then he went 0 of 3 in overtime. It was it was frustrating because similar to the last game against the Warriors, I think there's a point where if you are the best player, if you want to be the star player, if that's who you are, which that's who Jalen Green believes he is, and that's who this Rockets team believes he is, and that's how other teams are treating him, at some point you have to find a way to get yourself going. And whether that is just getting downhill and tucking your head and trying to get to the free throw line, which I already addressed, right? There was, you know, a lack of foul calls going Jalen's way. He had multiple drives where it felt like he he probably could have gotten a whistle, some physicality being let go by the officials in favor of the Dallas Mavericks. It's tough. It is what it is. But you're not going to win many games when your best player goes 0 for, what is it, 0 for 8 the rest of the game after having a, you know, 15-point first quarter, 6 of 7 shooting. It's just not enough, right? There, Jalen Green has to be better and has to show up in a bigger way scoring the ball, even though he was facilitating. That's that Again, that's a great part of his game that he has unlocked and has been able to lean on. So even when he is struggling to score the ball, he can help get his teammates involved. He can dish some of the dimes that he had. Like he had the one on the drive where he drove in, elevated, drew the second defender, and, and held the ball as he was sailing out of bounds and like threw it back to the corner for Jabari Smith Jr. who drained a three-pointer. Like he had some incredible high-level assists in this game. Yes, but there's just a certain point where it felt like in that fourth quarter especially, there was a stretch where Fred was kind of trying to take the game over, and I would have rather seen Jalen be the guy to try and take over this game, right? There's, It's just a weird... 
it's just weird to see Jalen Green finish the game with 15 shot attempts. Like that, that feels almost unacceptable when you lost Amin Thompson. So that's another offensive option, you know, that you, that you lost. Not that Amin is like a go-to guy, but just another guy that's, you know, not eating up shots that are going around. And so it just kind of feels weird that Jalen didn't have, you know, 20, 25 plus shot attempts. I'm not saying he needs to become a chucker. I'm not saying he just needs to start forcing shots up. And I think that's a big part of his growth and his development is not forcing the issue, not overstepping, not playing outside of the flow of the offense. But there are certain times when if you if you're the top dog, if you're the alpha scorer, you just got to find a way to take the game over and or at least find a way to respond, find a way to get your team the the shots the possessions that you need when you need them so just wanted to highlight that because again it, it's just really tough to win a game if your best player has the strong start that he did but then really struggles the west the rest of the way and again still impacting the game at a high level with his rebounding his facilitating even his defense in this game right and that's the the really the growth into the the development for Jalen Green is the fact that even when he is struggling to score the ball he can still be a net positive and very impactful in other areas of the game but you need your best player to show up in in games like this against top tier competition like the Dallas Mavericks got to have your best player show up Dylan Brooks was the Rockets' best offensive player in this game uh, quite easily. 29 points, 9 of 14 shooting, 5 of 6 from downtown. He was 6 of 7 at the charity stripe. Uh, Only a couple rebounds, a couple of assists, three steals, and he was jawing, I mean, going back and forth with Luka all game. In fact, there was a point where Luka threw his hands up and, you know, I think it was second quarter or so where he threw his hands up and was like praising God that he got a foul call. And the officials didn't really appreciate that, so they teched him up. And then the camera pans over to Dylan Brooks, and he's just smiling and just laughing and clapping along with it. Like, yeah, and they were they were in each other's face all game. There was a moment where Dylan tried to close out on Luca and got himself tripped up a little bit, and uh, Luca drained the three over the top of him. He didn't even, like, break his ankles or anything. It was just Dylan kind of stumbled on his own. Uh, so a really, you know, a, engaging back and forth between those two guys. But I think the the guy who probably walks away with the best, I don't know, trash talk of the night has to be Ime Udoka, who was asked by ESPN's Tim McMahon after the game because there was a point in OT where Rockets let go of the reins, OT happened, and they got cooked uh, in overtime. Mavs hit a bunch of threes, and it was all she wrote 18-7. There was a point where Luca hit kind of his dagger shot in OT, and I guess Tim McMahon saw that he had some words for Ime Odoka at that point. And when asked about it and what was going on in that interaction, this is what Ime had to say. I don't understand Slovenian, so I don't know. <laughs> Ime is Loki hilarious. He is a top tier troll sometimes with his answers and. You know, sometimes he'll crack a little sly smile, but he was, when he delivered that, he was stone-faced. He he really looked like the Stephen A. Smith meme where you're just kind of sitting there like unamused, no laugh, no nothing. Uh, I thought that was a, a fantastic answer, and uh, quite a few other people did as well. Uh, email, I swear, that's, that's kind of a legendary post-game answer. But you look at the, the rest of this game, the production from the Rockets, the minutes for Jock Landale off the bench continue to be impressive. He did a good job. 13 points on five of seven shooting. Uh, Cam Whitmore, I thought, was a really big reason that the Rockets were able to stay afloat in this game and, and stay ahead, actually. Uh, after the Mavericks tied things back up 96 all late in the third quarter, uh, there late in the third and top of the fourth, Fred hit some big shots to kind of give the Rockets back their buffer. Cam Whitmore hit a couple shots and got to the free throw line a little bit, and the Rockets were able to kind of re-extend their lead. And that's what makes this loss so frustrating is you were right there with one of the hottest teams in the NBA, one of the best teams in the NBA. You had lost one of your starters, and they had played overall a really strong game. And it just came down to those final minutes of late game execution. And those are some of the hurdles that a young team is going to have to grow and learn from, right? And the best part is we know that Ime Odoka is going to take this. And again, he he looked visibly pissed off post game. He's going to take this game. He's going to pour over the film with these guys. He's going to chew them out. He's going to yell at who he needs to yell at. And the Rockets are going to learn from this. And it sucks to have these kind of 
learning experiences, these moments like the loss to the Warriors and now this loss after a rematch, after the, the you know, getting punked by the Mavericks, you know, a week ago at Toyota Center. It kind of stings and it kind of takes some of the wind out of your sails with as good as this team was in the month of March to kind of, I don't know, limping to the finish line a little bit here. But it is what it is. And these are some of the, you know, the bumps and bruises that a young team is going to face along the way. It was still an incredibly exciting game. The Rockets were right there at the end of regulation, had a chance to win this game, didn't do what they needed to do in regulation. And then the Mavericks showed up and were absolutely the better team in overtime and cooked them with a handful of threes in that frame. But that's going to do it for today's episode. As always, I appreciate you so much for checking out the show. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast or on YouTube. Just search Locked on Rockets, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, a five-star review helps us out a ton. Drop your thoughts on this Rockets loss in the YouTube comments. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.